Welcome, I'm Seema from Edufinite. In this video, I'll help you to avoid making mistakes in matching the subjects with its suitable verb, which will in turn be beneficial for your writing and speaking skills. As the subject is vast, so I have decided to divide it into two parts. The link of the other video is provided in the description box for your convenience. But before we begin, I'd like to remind you that please feel free to give your valuable suggestions in the comment section. And if you like the content, do give a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Do consider subscribing to my channel. Now coming back to the topic, I will discuss the rules involved in making the correct choice of verbs for their respective subjects and help you to understand why the sentence, the list of things to buy is kept on your table is correct, whereas the sentence, the list of things to buy are kept on your table is incorrect. Moreover, there is a revision quiz at the end with answers to test your understanding. Without wasting any more time, let's delve into it. What is subject-verb agreement? Subject and verbs must agree with one another in number that is singular or plural. How do we identify subject and subject-verb agreement? First, we identify the subject, that is the person or the thing, performing the action. And then the verb, that is the action verb in the sentence. Next, if a subject is singular, that is he, she, it, Mary, train, etc., the verb must be singular like is, was, has, does, walks, goes, etc. For example, she goes to school. Next, if a subject is plural, like they, boys, cars, trees, etc., its verb must also be plural, like are, were, have, do, walk, go, etc. For example, they go to school. Next, look at this example. The list of things to buy is stroke R kept on your table. If we are sure that list is the subject and as it is singular, then we will select is as the verb. That is correct. But if in confusion we think things as the subject which is plural then we will select are as the verb which is incorrect so i hope you understand now let's look further now the rules of subject verb agreement we must follow the following guidelines to make the subject and verb agree number one when the subject in a sentence is composed of two or more singular nouns or pronouns joined by and then we use a plural verb for example hope your son and daughter are doing well we don't say hope your son and daughter is doing well because there are two nouns which are joined together so we will consider this as plural and add a plural verb to it. Next, she and I were completing the project. Here too, we have two pronouns, she and I, as the subject and and is joining them. So we'll have to have a plural verb. So the sentence is she and I were completing the project and not she and I was completing the project. Next, failure and success often go hand in hand. 
Now, failure and success are two abstract nouns and they are joined by and. So we choose the verb go and not goes because these two we consider as plural. Next, were you and Paul at the fair yesterday? So you and Paul, two subjects joined by and. So that's plural. So we use the plural verb were. Now the next rule, number two. When the subject of a sentence is composed of two or more singular nouns or pronouns joined by or or nor, then we use a singular verb. For example, neither her son nor her daughter was at home when she fell down. Her son and her daughter, there are two nouns which are being joined by nor. But we'll have to over here use a singular verb. So we are choosing was and we are not saying neither her son nor her daughter were at home when she fell down. Next, either you or I am mistaken. Next, the red pen or the blue pen is in the box. So since it's joined by or and not by and, so we'll choose the singular verb is and not the plural verb are. Now the next rule. Rule number three, when the compound subject of a sentence is composed of both a singular and a plural noun or pronoun joined by or or nor, then we should use a verb that agrees with the part of the subject that is nearer to the verb. Now let's see an example to understand it. Neither the man nor his sons were at home yesterday. So here, his sons is nearer to the verb. So we are using the verb were. But in the next sentence, neither his sons nor the man was at home yesterday. So here, the man, which is singular, is next to the verb. So we are using a singular verb, that is was. So in the first sentence and the second sentence, what is happening? In the first sentence, his sons, which is a plural noun, which is the subject is plural. So we are using, which is next to the verb. So we're using a verb accordingly. That is, we are using were instead of was. But in the next sentence, so the meaning is the same. But here, the subject, the man is nearer, which is singular, is nearer to the verb. So we are using was instead of where. Next, either the girl or I am at fault. Now here, I is next to the verb, so we are using am with it instead of are. Next, rule number four. When the subject of a sentence is a singular indefinite pronoun, then we use a singular verb like each, either, neither, one, no one, nobody, anyone, anybody, anything, someone, somebody, something, Everyone, everybody, everything. Let's look into some examples. Anything is possible. So since we are using anything, after that we are using a singular verb. That is is. So we are saying anything is possible and not anything are possible. Next, everybody wants to be happy. Here, again, after everybody we are using the verb wants instead of want because we have to use a singular verb so it's wants not everybody want so everybody wants to be happy next each of these mangoes is ripe now with each we use singular verb is and we don't say each of the mangoes are ripe now the next one rule number five when the subject of a sentence is a plural indefinite pronoun then we use singular verb with uncountable nouns and plural verb with countable nouns like some many most none all most etc now let's look into some examples to understand them better some of the salt is lying on the counter now here salt is an uncountable noun so we are using as stated, a singular verb is. Next, some of the pencils are lying on the counter. So here, pencils, which is the subject, 
over here part of the subject since sum is there and pencils is also there which is a countable noun so we have to use a plural verb so we are using are so we are not saying some pencils is lying on the counter we are saying some of the pencils are lying on the counter because pencils is a countable noun next most of the sand has been cleared here again we are using a singular verb because sand is an uncountable noun now next most of the stones have been cleared here again with most we are using a countable noun stones so we have used plural verb have now the next rule rule number six when the subject of a sentence comprising of two nouns qualified by each or every even though they are joined by and we use a singular verb before we had done that when two singular nouns are joined by and we use a plural verb but if they are qualified by every then we'll use a singular verb now let's look at the examples to understand them every man and every woman was provided with food and shelter here before man and woman we have the word every though it is joined by an since the word every is there so we will use a singular noun and we have used was over here next each boy and each girl was questioned by the teacher now here what is happening before the boy and the girl we have each so we'll have to use a singular noun let's look into the next one rule number seven when the subject of a sentence is a plural indefinite pronoun then we use a plural verb like many several both few etc let's look into the examples to understand them both the boys and the girls were responsible for the splendid completion of the job so here what is happening we are using the plural indefinite both before the boys and the girls so we'll follow it with a plural verb so we are using were over here next many of the trees are being trimmed today so here too many is the indefinite pronoun which is used as a subject so it will be followed by a plural verb are next several of the houses have been renovated here too several after several we have the plural verb have and not has next rule number eight when a phrase comes between the subject and the verb of a sentence the verb must still agree with the subject not the noun or the pronoun in the phrase following the subject of the sentence so let's look into the example to understand it better a bouquet of roses was presented to the new manager now here a bouquet is the subject on which we have to focus and since a bouquet is a singular noun so we'll be using a singular verb with it will not focus on off roses that is the phrase in between we are not going to focus in the phrase in between we are going to focus on the subject that is a bouquet so for a bouquet we are using a singular verb was whereas a bouquet of roses were presented to the new manager is incorrect because here what we are doing we are trying to think that roses is the focus or it is the subject and with it we are trying to match it with a plural verb were but actually in this sentence since a bouquet is the subject and of roses is just a phrase in between so we will have to ignore it and focus on the actual subject and choose the verb accordingly next rule number nine when the subject of a sentence is plural in form but singular in meaning then we use a singular verb like news, politics, measles, physics, wages, etc. Now let's look into some of the examples. The news 
is authentic. Here, though news, the word news has S at its end, but this is not a plural word. This is actually singular, but it ends with an S. So with it goes the singular verb is and not are. Next, physics is her favorite subject. Now the word physics itself has an S in it. Physics, just because it has an S is not plural, it is singular. So we'll have to use a singular verb with it and say physics is a favorite subject and not physics are her favorite subject. That's absolutely wrong. Next, politics is not my cup of tea. For the same reasons, politics is not my cup of tea and not politics are my cup of tea. Next, measles is a contagious disease. Similarly, the word measles itself has an S in it. It's not plural form. So we'll use a singular verb with it, that is is. Next, let's look at the next one. Rule number 10. When a subject of a sentence is plural in form with plural meaning, then we use a plural verb like scissors, trousers, jeans, tweezers, shears, etc. Let's look into some of the examples. The scissors are in the drawer. These trousers are new. So we don't say the scissors is in the drawer or we don't say these trousers is new. Next, rule number 11. When the subject of a sentence is a collective noun, we use singular verb when the collection is thought as one whole. But plural verb, when the individuals of which it comprises are focused, like committee, family, crowd, team, etc. So let's look into some of the sentences. The committee has set up an urgent meeting. Here we are taking the committee as a whole, which is one unit. So we are using a singular verb here, has and not have. In the next sentence, the committee are divided on attending the meeting. Now here the committee represents the members, which is plural. That means the individuals that it is comprising of or it comprises of. So for that reason, over here, we are using the plural verb are and not is. In the next sentence, the family was elated by the good news. Here, we are focusing on family as a unit and not on its member. So, the family is considered singular and we are using the singular verb was with it instead of the plural verb were. Next, rule number 12. When the subject of a sentence is a number of plus a noun, it is plural. So we use a plural verb. But when it is the number of plus a noun, it is singular. So we use a singular verb. Now let's look into some examples to understand it better. A number of paratroopers are performing brilliant acrobatics. So here it is again a number of and then we have the noun paratroopers. So this is considered, since this is indefinite number of paratroopers, they haven't specified how many paratroopers. So that's indefinite number of paratroopers. We consider that as plural. And so we use the plural verb are. But in the next sentence, the number of paratroopers performing acrobatics is 20. So here again, as we have said earlier, the number of plus the noun paratroopers, which is at the end, there is a definite number being specified. So we consider it as singular. And let's look at the next rule, rule number 13. When the subject of a sentence is a gerund or an infinitive, it is singular. So we use a singular verb. For example, walking is good for help. So walking is the gerund. So we consider it singular. So we use a singular 
verb is we don't say walking are good for health that's absolutely wrong so we say walking is good for health the next one smoking is injurious to health again smoking is a gerund so we use singular verb with it because that's considered singular as a subject so smoking is injurious to health is correct and smoking are injurious to health is absolutely wrong next to go or not to go was her dilemma now to go is an infinitive so with an infinitive what do we do we use a singular verb so we say to go or not to go was her dilemma and not to go or not to go were her dilemma next rule number 14 when the subject of a sentence is the plus an adjective it is plural so we use a plural verb let's look into some of the examples the intelligent are respected by the society so the plus intelligent is an adjective so the plus intelligent is followed by a plural verb so we're using are instead of is so the intelligent are respected by the society and not the intelligent is respected by the society that's wrong next the poor are not dishonest here the plus poor is the adjective so the poor should be followed according to the rule by a plural verb so the poor is not dishonest is absolutely wrong we have to write the poor are not dishonest next the mighty are feared by all so the same rule applies the mighty the plus adjective followed by a plural verb and that's how we end it today now let's do some revision and see how far you have understood Fill in the blanks with a verb in agreement with its subject in the sentences given below. The price of all the commodities blank risen. Each of the members blank felicitated. No news blank good news. Each girl and each boy blank asked to attend their classes regularly. Neither her grandfather nor her grandmother blank alive. Harry and Sally blank going to the market. The team blank performing well. The team blank not agreeing on the result. Some of the sugar blank still lying on the floor. A herd of cows blank grazing in the field. Neither the girl nor her brothers blank at home. Neither the brothers nor the girl blank at home. Many of the boxes blank empty. These scissors blank not that sharp. Crying blank not going to help. Now you can pause the video and write down your answers and check when I'm t telling the answers whether they are correct or not. Now the answers. The price of all commodities has risen. Each of the members was facilitated. No news is good news. Each girl and each boy was asked to attend their classes regularly. Neither her grandfather nor her grandmother is alive. Harry and Sally are going to the market. The team is performing well the team are not agreeing on the result some of the sugar is still lying on the floor a herd of cows is grazing in the field neither the girl nor her brothers were at home neither the brothers nor the girl was at home many of the boxes are empty these scissors are not that sharp crying is not going to help so if you find it a little confusing you can go and revisit the video 
maybe once or twice it'll become thank you for being there with me hope you found this session useful do like and share this video bye take care stay safe see you in the next one